So I wanted to point out that we are in the last day of Lohar's trial. The very beginning of a kingdom, there are two areas that are really, really important. Rise of kingdoms. This only happens at the very beginning when the kingdom is nascent, a newborn baby, and it only lasts the six days. Well, I guess essentially that's seven days. And, of course, you can look at that and what you should be doing with that. But Lohar's trial is really important because you don't get these very often. And some of the rewards in Lohar's trial are very important for protecting your city and for getting major tokens for backup for when your city is under attack and you can't gather or things of that nature. So you should be hunting barbarians as much as possible and to do that you should hunt the highest level you can currently the highest level I can hunt is 11 if you are a brand new kingdom you will have a lower level and you gradually move up until you are at the highest level possible and I like to do send out all my commanders at once on one attack now normally I will go one after the other and say hold position after attack I'll do that for this first one just because I want you to see how beneficial that is. These are the possible rewards just for this attack. We're attacking a level 11. I'm going to send all my commanders. All my commanders are three stars that are going to be sent so they can take a secondary commander. Every single one of these commanders gets XP and it's not divided. It's the same for each. So the more commanders you send, the more rewards you get. It's like if I send three commanders, it's like I'm attacking three separate level one, level 11 barbarians. So send as many as you are able of the commanders that you have. So here we will go. I will set them up. I like to send commanders. The very first one, I try to make the secondary one of my gatherers. I like my gatherers develop their XP when they are attacking barbarians as a secondary. And you can tell I've set up Markswoman through her talent tree to increase her XP by 20% and to have 11% greater attack. So when you develop your peacekeeping talents, just read through what they are and you decide which ones you like the best. So I will send that. It's a piece of cake for her. It's going to be a piece of cake for all of them, except for the fact that I messed up where I have the barbarians to attack. She may finish before I can send out the others. With Lohar again, I'll probably send out another gatherer, and then we'll see what I send out for the third. Now, this game will automatically give you who is the strongest based on what you are sending it to do, so the strongest for attacking. Now, see, I've left them all out camping. It'll be cheaper for my next send. I'll go ahead and see if there's another 11 I can send. Okay, so I'll say attack. Um, this time I'm going to have them come back because right now our our alliance is under attack nearby, and I don't care about wasting XP. I've got plenty of or AP. I have plenty of AP. So what I'll do is I will do multiple selections, and I'll make sure all are selected. You can pick or choose who you want selected. Now, because of the the way I've set up their talent trees, it's going to cost me four or yes, four AP less. This is the total AP it'll cost me, so I'll send them to March. Actually, I may just set up another one. I'll put a 10 out, and I'll just automatically send them to that as well right after this one. As soon as I see that they're done battling, I'll just send them over there because I'm not worried if I get attacked. If I get attacked, it's another lesson for teaching. Okay, so they were starting to march back home, so I'm going to go ahead and send them over here, send them to attack. And just see how it goes repetitive, one after the other, after the other, after the other. And you can do that and end up getting lots and lots of rewards for that. So let's go ahead and we'll look at the reports. So, so far there's been 12 reports that I've had, but here it shows an attack canceled because one of them didn't get there in time. So I get my AP back. Um, like I told you, I was a little delayed because I pulled up that other screen. So... You'll notice here, each of my commanders is getting his own report, and it gets their own rewards. And you usually get three or four rewards per. So I got four on that one, three on that one, three on that one, and then, of course, the other ones as well. And you can see they're both getting the same amount of XP. Different commanders get different XP based on how I set up their talent tree. See, Kusunoki, he doesn't have a peacekeeping talent tree. So I can't add XP. He only earns the max that's available, but uh, as does his secondary as a result. But because 
Mark's woman is a peacekeeper. I can set up her her peacekeeping talent tree to charge me less or to earn me more XP for each commander. And the same with Lohar. He's even set up more. And one of the neat things about Lohar's trial is you're going to earn sculptures so that you will earn a Lohar all the sooner. And Lohar is a great peacekeeper to have. And you do want peacekeeping commanders. If you set up your first culture as Britain, you would have gotten Boudicca. If you did Byzantium, you would have got Belisarius. I love them both. Um, if you're doing the expeditions, you can actually use what you earn in that to buy Aethelflaed. She's amazing. So there's some really good um, peacekeeper commanders. And you want to have as many peacekeeper commanders as you have the ability to send commanders out. I like to set them up to become three stars as quickly as possible so they can take out a secondary and both can be earning this XP because I like to earn a lot of XP by hunting barbarians. I don't want to just depend on the XP tokens. Now, because it's Lohar's trial, if I go over to system, you'll see that I earned all of these bone necklaces. I earned, it looks like nine total. One was already checked. Oh, eight total. And so there's more rewards with those. I already accepted all of those. So you tend to earn almost one per attack. Not necessarily exactly one per attack, but sometimes it will be one per attack. In this case, I did three attacks with three commanders, and I had one get canceled, so I had eight attacks total, and I had eight Lohars. And I had zeroed them out so I could show you in the items what you earn with those bone necklaces. So I'm going to go ahead and accept all eight of these bone necklaces. And you will see you get speed ups, you get gems, more speed ups. You get the 10,000 foods, not just the thousands from hunting. You get the 50,000s. And notice there are more than one. You get these woods, and these tokens are like emergency supplies for you, and you're going to need those because there are certain events where certain alliances, and this zone definitely has that kind of alliance, they will go out and attack gatherers, and so you're not going to want to be gathering. It's called the elimination of enemies, and they turn it into something called killing event, and I will do a separate video on that to prepare you for that. And then these arrows of resistance are the main thing that I think is the most important about this. These are really hard to earn. You'll earn, a, you'll earn them occasionally hunting barbarians, but gosh, not even 1 in 10 are you earning these arrows, and not in the numbers you're going to earn them here. And there are a couple other events where you earn them, um, supply boxes being one. Um, and then you're also earning these long bows so that you can actually um, send out the long bows and bucklers leaders for rallies. And most of you already know what those are all about. I recommend holding on to those until we're bored with um, not having enough to rally when the ports start getting too high for our levels. So do be hunting Lohars or Barbarians right now during the event. It ends very soon. There's only four hours left. Um, also, I like to get XP as much as I can to be able to raise my XP. Um, you earn XP in a lot of, or AP in a lot of areas, as you notice, I've got a lot already. There are rewards that you earn for certain events, you'll, certain milestones you make in your city, but mostly I do like to do it through the VIP program. When you go to the VIP shop, you can, when you get to level two, you will have the option of actually buying action point recovery and they're not expensive and so I always box max those out. I max out all of the ones I can buy with things that I can gather. I start with the ones that I will be using now which is first the AP, then the speed ups, then the starlight sculptures and then when I get to the level where I can start buying the dazzling starlights I'll use wood that requires 400k wood and I will start buying these if I start getting excess supplies. I still haven't figured out how I'm going to do the equipment stuff on the cities that are ready to have that. I'm, I'm doing what's necessary for minimum equipment at the moment because there's so much gold involved in that. And so I will highly recommend while you are not able to gather, be hunting barbarians. You really should be hunting barbarians at this time. I am more of a player versus environment type of player and less player versus player is on an even play field. And 
I haven't gotten to create that just yet. I'm hoping to in the future because I'd like to train people in actual battles utilizing analysis of the reports, but for now let's stick to player versus environment and go hunt some barbarians.